Hey everyone, how's it going? Uh, welcome to the Redesign Gmail uh, workshop and challenge in Figma and Miro board. Um, we're just gonna wait a couple more minutes for everyone to join us if there's a few more folks who want to join. Uh, but in the meantime, I'd love to hear more about you. So uh, let me know in the chat where you're from and where you are in your UX learning journey and what are you hoping to accomplish? Uh, really nice to meet you and excited to get started. Let's just wait a couple more minutes and then for the folks who are just joining us right now, uh, feel free to introduce yourself in the chat and let me know where you're from and where you are in your UX learning journey. Uh, really curious to hear where everyone is and what they hope to accomplish. Um, so yeah, feel free to use the chat and we'll get started shortly in about three more minutes. I see a name that's really close to mine, um, so welcome. Hi, Abby, and welcome from Manchester in England. Uh, uh, great to see that it's an international crew and uh, awesome to hear that you're a graphic designer working through the Google UX course. Uh, good luck with that one. Hi, Bridget. Nice to meet you from Toronto and congratulations on completing your boot camp. Um, so welcome and I'm glad that you were able to put your LinkedIn in there as well. This is a great opportunity to network. Hi, Safe from Manchester. Awesome that you finished Career Foundry. Uh, congratulations. All right. So it might be a little bit smaller and more intimate than usual, but what I'm gonna do is start sharing my screen and we can go ahead and get started. So if you can see my screen, welcome to the redesign Gmail challenge. It's just taking a second to load, all right. So what we're going to do is we have a lot to get through today and um, a lot to do. So we're going to go through some of the workshop ground rules in 10 minutes, and then we're going to start defining problems and voting on problems that we're seeing with Gmail uh, in our Miro board. And then we're going to go into Figma and start to come up with some wireframes and solutions for those problems that we're seeing. My name is Samaya. I'm the workshop facilitator for today. I have over seven years of experience working at startups and consulting firms and corporate. Uh, I'm also the co-founder of ID8 Labs, uh, and I'm really excited to be here today. Some ground rules before we begin. I would love it if you could stay on mute uh, and only unmute if you have a contribution to make or you would like to voice an opinion or thought or idea. Uh, but the most important thing of all is just to be kind and open-minded and always build on other people's ideas here. We're really trying to create a psychologically safe environment where both good and bad ideas can be shared openly and freely. Uh, we just wanna make this uh, a place where there is no judgment there is no uh, harsh critique. Uh, so really, you know, feel free to express any ideas that you're having and be kind and receptive towards other people's ideas. The purpose of this session is just to make our time together 
flexible and to share ideas around topics that we're passionate about, especially around uh, the topic of Gmail and redesigning Gmail. We're here to find like-minded individuals and connect with other people. So I'm really glad if you're, you know, adding in your LinkedIn and uh, talking to other people. Uh, that's totally the, the point of these types of sessions. And the biggest thing we're going to try and do today is come to a consensus on what are the most pressing problems with Gmail and what are the best solutions we can create. Uh, of course, we're all here for a small taste of UX design as well. The session is not there to start building solutions right away. So even though we're defining problems in Miro board and then going into Figma and starting to wireframe some ideas, uh, it's a starting point only. Don't, you know, this is not the place where we would go take a wireframe idea and turn it into a fully fledged product that's high fidelity and beautiful. Because actually the truth is there's still a lot of more validation we need to do uh, before we can turn some of these ideas into really viable solutions and actually launch them to the market to different users. And so we would need additional uh, design and research methods to really validate our ideas. We'd need to conduct user interviews, stakeholder interviews, we would need to run more ideation sessions like these, focus groups, generating business models, monetization strategy, and marketing strategy. We have to have a really holistic approach to new feature development or new product development uh, when we're building or redesigning a product. And in fact, uh, you know, there's a misconception about UX design, uh, especially amongst uh, folks who are just breaking into the field. When I was breaking into the field, I was really intimidated by all these beautiful and stunning designs that I saw on Dribbble and Behance. And I thought that I would never be a UX designer because my designs were just not that pretty. And what it turns out to be is the reality of the UX design field is that about 80% of the work we do involves gathering context. Whether we're user researchers or UX designers, we spend a lot of time doing user interviews, stakeholder interviews, competitor analyses, going through information architecture models, coming up with multiple concepts, wireframes, workflows, journey maps, process maps, all about context. Only about 20% of the work that we do, whether we're a UX designer or researcher, is around making that design look polished and pretty and finalized, really focusing on one concept, style guides for that concept, color, typography, high fidelity prototyping. Uh, so remember that you know good design comes from a very ugly place. 80% of our work is pretty ugly, uh, and then we, we make it beautiful at the last minute. And if you would like to know, learn more about design, I really recommend checking out www.id8labs.co. Uh, if you go to our homepage, we actually have a Slack community of over 6,000 designers. So I would love it if you could join us as well. Uh, and we always share webinars and challenges there. And we have a jobs board. So if you are a recent bootcamp grad, we have a junior UX jobs channel and you can join us there and hear more about junior jobs as well. Uh, the biggest thing I hope that, you know, ends up happening is that I hope you leave this session feeling like you can make an impact on the world and that you actually can act on your ideas. So all of what we do today could be really great uh, portfolio pieces if you're trying to get a UX job, or if you're just breaking into UX, maybe it will start to spark some ideas on new products that you can build within your Google Coursera course or within one of our courses as well, if you're looking for a more guided program. And I really just hope you, you know, even if you're not going to act on these ideas, I hope that you allow your mindset to shift. All of these ideation sessions are about rethinking what is possible or rethinking our own assumptions and our own way of looking at the world. Uh, and so allow yourself to change as the session goes about. And you might be wondering, why do we do sessions like these? And in the design world, we actually run ideation workshops to bring different points of views together. Typically, we run these with executive teams across sales, marketing, customer service, tech. And we really want to get a holistic understanding of the organization, especially from a consultant point of view. And then we want to make sure that all the executives within the company align on priorities. And so we want them to flesh out problems 
start to agree on what are the most pressing sol problems for the business to solve. And then we as the designers come in and we help to build a roadmap and we help to guide the solutioning process. The stakeholders are involved with solutioning. They co-create some of the ideas with us, but then we're the ones that flesh it out and organize it in a roadmap so that every feature we release is doable and feasible to release within a short amount of time. So we're, what we're really thinking about here are what are some high impact, low effort initiatives that the organization can tackle. And of course, the ideation sessions are not about any one big idea. So we're trying not to fall in love with any one idea. We're really trying to do multiple attempts and multiple iterations. So we're not here for true love. We're here for browsing, kind of like a Tinder mindset never fall in love with any one of your ideas. And if you're totally brand new to design, I'd like for you to think about it this way. I would like for you to think about it like this image on the left hand side as opposed to the right hand side. So everything we're going to be creating in Figma today are the bare bones foundation for our designs. These are the broad brush strokes that really just show the shape or or concept of what we're trying to get at, but they're not going to show all the details. It's not going to look really beautiful like the image on the right. It's not going to be as high fidelity. And if you're also new to design, I'd like to, for you to think about it in a more associative mindset rather than a linear mindset. I've noticed that a lot of uh, junior designers or even junior entrepreneurs think that they have to go through certain steps very linearly to get to the end result. And unfortunately, a lot of courses are designed that way too, from start to finish, go through the design process. The truth is some of the best entrepreneurs I've met, some of the best designers have a very associative mindset. So they're taking seemingly random data points and they're gathering all these seemingly random pieces of context and they're connecting the dots and putting together ideas. And then somewhere between connecting the dots, they find new trends, new pieces of information, new insights, a new take on the world that actually leads to an innovative product. So that's kind of what I'm driving at. What leads to innovation. Anyone can become a designer. There's a lot of mediocre companies out there that don't really have innovation in their work culture. But I think what ID8 Labs focuses on is the innovation. How can you create an innovative new product? How can you really uh, have a very innovative mindset as you design, as you became, become a creative? And if you're also brand new to design, I'd like for you to think about it this way. Everything that we're doing today is the UX side of things. And UX is really the skeleton and the muscles, everything that's invisible, everything that you cannot see, that 80% of context gathering. What you end up seeing when you see a fully fleshed out product is the skin and the face, right? Um, but you don't see everything that's hidden underneath that that's keeping that face together, all the bones, all the muscles, um, the structure of the, the final look. And so with that, I'm going to walk through our mirror board exercise first. We are at 4.45, so we're right on time. What I'm going to do is I'll be sharing a mirror board with you, and you'll be landing on a, a page with one board, the defining a problem board. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take this problem statement, and we're going to start to use that problem statement as a template and define our own problems, problems that we're seeing with Gmail. So the template goes like this. Users want to take a specific action, but problem because cause of problem. This makes them feel a certain emotion around the problem. And so by using this um, template, we really start to become specific on what problem we're trying to solve. And we, we try and get specific on the user type, uh, the action they're taking, what that problem is, what's the cause of the problem, and what's the emotion around the problem. And in human-centered design, the more emotional the problem, the better, because that shows that there's a true pain point. Uh, and uh, if you can solve the emotional problems a user has, you're more likely to be successful. So with that, I'm also going to, after we you know, define those problems, I'm gonna share a Figma board with you. 
you'll see my design board. And if you're completely new to Figma and you've never done it before, that's totally fine. Uh, you can just watch me and watch us go through the design ideation. But if you want to give it a try and you want to you know, prototype some of your own ideas, you'll see a whole bunch of boards on the Figma board. And you can just choose you know, whichever board you would like and claim it. Uh, and then we can get started on designing. And so what I like to do is we have three rows here and we like to take one problem statement and then use the, the first row for that one problem statement and the second row for a second problem statement and then the third row for a third problem statement and we only have five minutes to design each screen so i'm actually going to put a timer on which makes it a little nerve-wracking but it also ensures that you don't get hung up on any one idea and that you take time uh, to look at all of the you know different possibilities and solutions and so we're going to go through this exercise and then we're going to share our ideas with each other so with that i'm going to Yes. Why are we doing this, you might ask. The reason we do this is because this whole session is about focusing on problems rather than just solutioning things. So even though we're, we've defined our problem statements, even when we get into Figma, we're still thinking about the problem. And each of our visualizations must be a different way to solve that one problem or three problem statements. And so we're always focused on the problem in this session. And the truth is that good design is really ugly at first and then it becomes invisible. So if you think about one of my favorite platforms is Netflix. Whenever I go on to Netflix, I'm not even thinking about the navigation or the structure of how information is arranged or content is arranged. I just go in and I just find my favorite piece of content and I'm watching my favorite piece of content. However, when I, and same is true for TikTok. Somehow I just go in and I get sucked in. Um, but when I am on on Amazon's streaming platform, I have a lot of trouble navigating to my specific piece of content. And I have to think about what I need to do next. And so I really believe that, you know, platforms like Netflix and TikTok have made their design so good that it's invisible, that I'm not even thinking about how to navigate and what to do and where to go next. And so to get to that invisible level of design, uh, it really just starts with being playful. So really just make sure you're having fun. Don't take any one of your ideas too seriously. Uh, and that's where the, the best solutions come from. So with that, I'm gonna share the Miro board link first. Just give me one sec. Okay. Here we go. So this is the link to the Miro board and I'm also going to share my screen. So in case you can't see it, um, you, can, you can watch through the screen. All right. And if you're totally new to Miro board, all you need to do is grab this fourth icon from the top at this left-hand side panel is labeled sticky note. You just have to click on that and then you can choose any color sticky note that you want and drag and drop it. And you can start to write your own problem statement. So let's think about a good problem statement. Um, professionals often want to browse, check multiple emails, email accounts, but don't have a view that integrates all their accounts because they have to sign into each account individually. This makes them feel overwhelmed when checking email. That could be one problem statement. And as you notice, I'm not thinking too hard about it. I'm just trying to get my words out and I can of course refine it over time um, or become even more specific or broad. If I got too specific, maybe that's not good either. 
Um, so let's try another one. That was a medium level of specificity. It wasn't too specific. It wasn't too vague. Um, let's see if I can come up with another one. Maybe it could be professionals want to balance between work and personal tasks. But have separate accounts for each task because of um, data security reasons. This makes them feel like they are wasting time flipping between. So these are almost two different takes on the same problem. Professionals checking multiple email accounts. Here we're trying to get a little bit more specific about why they're flipping between accounts. It might be between work and personal. Maybe they run two jobs. Maybe they have a side hustle or maybe they're gig workers. And so they have different emails to check. Um, so we're trying to get at that those different types of problems. But there's, it's still the same flavor of problem, but um, just different angles to it. Um, so we can always you know, keep brainstorming and uh, thinking through how to better articulate our problem. So I'll, I'll pause there and I'll give everyone a couple of minutes to write their problem statements. I'm seeing a lot of really great starts. All right, I'm going to start um, talking through some of these. So here's one. Users want to have personalized tags in their main inbox, but because of a lack of personalization, they struggle to add new tabs to their main inbox. This makes them feel frustrated. Who wrote this one? Can someone talk me through this one? Caitlin, awesome. Yeah, um, this is just based off of a personal experience, but like I want kind of like a personalized tag for like job alerts. Um, mm -hmm. and I can make that like, and it'll appear in the sidebar, but I'd really like to see that in like my main inbox. So I yeah, I nice. love personalization. Perfect. Okay, that's a great one. I think you're already getting into the solution, which is the personalized tag. So I wonder if we could frame this problem statement to be agnostic of any solution. So maybe you, we could say users want to categorize their email or users want to, um, is there a better way to say categorize? Want to uh, sort their email into different topics. That could be another way of saying it, which is agnostic of the tag solution. Um, and then that way, that might open up by framing the problem statement. That way, uh, if you were doing an ideation session with a group of designers or a team, then you would give them the creativity to come up with solutions that might not be a tagging system, but might be something better than one or something completely unthought of, like a playlist, for example. Um, so that, that, but it's a really good one. I really like this problem statement. All right, let's take a look at a few more. Regular users want to select and delete multiple emails, but needs to select them one by one. Oh yes, this is awful. <laughs> I have this problem. This makes them feel overwhelmed. Who wrote this one? Hello, that's me. Awesome. Um, this is a really great statement. I think this one is also really specific. Uh, I, I'm curious, you know, what made you choose this problem statement? Oh, wow. Um, it's because uh, I, I have like over a thousand unread emails. And sometimes I just wanted to 
you know, delete them all because most of them are spam. So, but it doesn't, Gmail doesn't have that feature, unfortunately. Yes. Yeah. I, I love this, this one. This is really great. I would even say you could make it a little bit broader. You could say users want to manage their emails or uh, manage when emails are deleted, something like that, uh, to just get it a little broader in case, for example, if you were leading a team of designers, um, by making it slightly broader, you give them the creativity to, um, to come up with really interesting solutions. But yes, this is such a big problem. I'm glad that someone. All right, let's take a look at this one. Team members want to look for the email that has the correct attachment they are looking for, but they need to open emails one by one to find where the attachment is. Yes, this makes them feel disheartened because it's time consuming. Really good one. This is another really tactical one. I really like these. Let's take a look at some more. Gmail users want to search for emails from specific senders and uh, select the emails and move them to specific labels. Oh, okay, yes. But they cannot search and move the emails and can only select emails without searching and move them to the labels. This makes their work tedious if they have to go through all the emails and select them and move them to specific labels. Yes, and actually this, I'm gonna group these two together because, um, it's similar to that idea of a tagging system or a labeling system. And I think there's two people here facing the same problem, just articulating it a little bit differently. Right. Graphic designers want to browse their sent or received attachments, but there's no place to see them all at once. This makes them feel uh, frustrated every time they want to visually find a specific file. Interesting. Whoever uh, wrote this one, can you explain to me a little bit more about this problem? Okay. Oh, okay. No worries, uh, Luis. Um, so it sounds like you really want to go back and find your own files in your email, and it's hard to do that. So that's really interesting. And I think this is an interesting problem because it ties into Gmail storage and Google Drive and maybe a solution in between Gmail and Google Drive. And I think um, that's what you're hitting at. Um, and so we could start to articulate it that way as well, because I think this problem statement might be too specific towards graphic designers, but maybe by making it a little broader, we could say professionals need to go back and look for files um, and organize files. And it's hard toggling between Google Drive and, and Gmail. We, that was rough, but I'm sure we, we could do it better. Um, all right, here's another one. Users want to be able to create a filter to move certain incoming email and current mail into certain folders, but are unable to do it easily. This, ooh, okay. This is very similar to the tagging system, but everyone's already thinking about a solution. So I think what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm going to start voting on some of these. I really like this, this problem with the Gmail issue. So I'm gonna click on it. Um, you'll see a smiley face pop up in that uh, horizontal panel, and I can just heart this problem. And so I would like you to go ahead and heart three problem statements that you're seeing on the board today. So that's going to be one problem statement I'm going to vote on. And then I really liked the one about tagging. So uh, and I like how it's being rewritten um, and that idea of a personalized tagging system. So that would be my second vote. And then um, Yes, deleting and managing. This is such a big problem. So I think I'm gonna heart this one. And so those are gonna be three problem statements I work on for our Figma session, but you're free to choose any problem statement that you would like and um, heart it and, and you know use it for your Figma design. So here, I'll heart this one as well. And you can always come back to this mirror board uh, to check in on how the problem was written. Uh, a lot of times designers, when we get uh, briefs from the directors or senior stakeholders within our companies, we'll have to go back to the brief or go back to the context provided by that stakeholder to really make sure we're solving that specific problem uh, as we design our, our ideas. So with that, I'm going to move to the redesign Gmail section because we're exactly at five o'clock and I wanna make sure we have enough time. I'm going to share this link with you so that you can hop on 
Figma as well. I think you should, let me see if that link works. Um, oh, edit. Hopefully you should be able to have edit access to this file. I also put a new um, Figma link in there in case this one doesn't work. Uh, but basically I love it if you could go ahead and claim any one um, uh, board, empty board that you see. So you can just click on your name here and then write up your name. If you're totally new to Figma, no worries at all. I know it can be really overwhelming getting into Figma for the first time. Because we're focusing on ugly designs today, there's really just two features you need to be designing in Figma. Uh, the first is this rectangle tool. So you can click on it at the top panel and you can choose any shape that you want and you can start to click on the shape and then you can create the shape on any of the boards. So that's one way to um, use these different types of shapes. You can also click on the text panel right here and then drag and drop and write something in the text. And then you can always make the font smaller by going to this right hand side panel and I'm gonna make it small, not that small. Uh, and so now I can design with text and sh very basic shapes. So we're coming up with super basic wireframes. If you're still like, oh no, this is too crazy. I can't do it. Um, just take any piece of paper. It could be, <laughs> I have a piece of mail here. I like to write on them. Um, just take any piece of paper and start sketching your ideas. So it doesn't have to be in Figma if you're uh, very new to it, but I would challenge you to, you know, at least try it and start to design in Figma. And to get started, I am going to set a timer for us for five minutes and 10 seconds. And then I'm going to be designing for our first problem statement. Here's the clock. So I guess for the first problem statement, I'm going to choose um, the idea of personalization. I really liked that tagging idea or a folder idea. Um, things like that. Um, oh, and great. It, I'm not the only one who sketches on mails. Yes, free paper. Great. Yeah, I do that all the time. Everything is a mess on my desk. Um, but with that, personalization will be my first problem statement to solve. I have five minutes and 10 seconds. I'll call out time as we go. And let's click start. And let's go ahead. All right. So how do we make things more personalized? Hmm. So Gmail always seems to have like some sort of navigation panel up top. I'm just gonna define my constraints here. And then they have the side panel here. And then sometimes we have something show up on the other side, which is really actually very cluttered. Um, so maybe if we like minimized them, like maybe you could minimize your panels. I know that wasn't the problem statement, but here I am coming up with new problems. <laughs> um, and sometimes this is that associative mindset. It, you know, ideas come from nowhere sometimes. And then I can just, you know, pull open that panel. Um, but yes, the problem was tagging. So how do I solve that? Maybe I could have like, instead of the lines, maybe my top emails, like most urgent could be a section. And these are the top five things or three things or four things that I absolutely need to answer today. And if Gmail just knew, like it's my work playlist almost um, that I need to do today, that would be kind of cool. Most urgent for today. Oops. We are at, I'm slow today, three minutes and 40 seconds. All right. And then the next section could be the different tags. Um, so now we have our email list items. And maybe they're color coded. Maybe if we have like a, this needs to be done quickly. This one is not as urgent. This one is for fun. I wonder how that would work. Would that be too much sensory overload? <laughs> Who knows? Maybe that's a bad idea that could turn into a good idea. Two minutes and 53 seconds. All right, let's see. Hmm. 
So I really like the idea of the most urgent and I'm going to now start focusing my ideas. And I like the idea of playlists as well. So I'm almost thinking like Netflix, this is my associative mindset. So if we could have our top two playlists of emails and I get to see a nice preview of that email basically. So I can read that email before even clicking into it. Um, that's kind of what I wanted. Like this. You get the idea. Um, so then maybe now I, I know exactly what to focus on. Um, and then maybe I don't need to color code. Maybe that uh, color coding was a little obnoxious. So maybe the color needs to be more subtle. Uh, here are my list items. I'm at one minute and 50 seconds. And then here's my tag system. Here's my tag. Here's another tag and it could be about whatever. We're at one minute and 33 seconds. All right. So I've been a little repetitive with my ideas. So I wonder if I can break out of that repetition. Is there any other way we could make use of the space effectively? What if that left-hand side panel was where I put my tiles, my most urgent? Something like that. Um, does that feel better visually? Does that resolve things? Does it make it worse? I don't know. And here I can have that tag system for the rest of the email clutter. Um, we are at 33 seconds. Here's my tag, different tags, all right. Hmm, can I come up with something different? Maybe instead of those being my urgent emails, maybe these could be content tag folders. And so these are my different colored tag folders and I could go into those folders. And then maybe there's like the machine learning algorithm to the point of that person who wanted to arrange. I'm out of time, but I'm gonna cheat a little bit. Um, the person who said they wanted to arrange different items into different folders, maybe there's a machine learning aspect to it. So maybe you set up your folders and then you sort a couple of the pieces of email you get per day. And then the algorithm learns how you like to sort things and it's, it automatically sorts your email for you. Kind of like Spotify, right? Can we kind of make things like Spotify where it knows what playlist to put your songs in? So I didn't get as far as I would like, but um, those were the ideas. Wow, everyone's looking really good. It's great to see some really cool ideas. Nice, Meredith. I like that you copied and pasted the um, sticky notes. Uh, Janine, your ideas look beautiful. I would love it if you could share your ideas with the rest of the, the, the room. Uh, yes, <laughs> I'll just talk about this quickly. I just thought of like organizing or categorizing each email into like, uh, categories like work, personal, or, or any other uh, categories, and maybe um, I thought about like incorporating it or, or the idea of having like a Kanban board similar to like Trello, where they can organize it into, for example, in work categories, they can uh, have like, can still organize it with like to do, increase, urgent, done, and so they can like drag and drop and switch any emails or cards into any of those subcategories. So that's kind of uh, what I was thinking. This is beautiful. I love your designs. I love how you created a very subtle tagging um, 
system that looks so beautiful and it still has a lot of great white space. So this is beautiful. I love love your concept of Gmail meets Trello board. And yeah. I think this actually segues really well into our next concept idea or the next problem, which is how do we connect Gmail with Google Drive and organizing all our files? So I think I would challenge you to take this Trello idea even further and, and how do we kind of include the Google Drive in there? I think that could be really interesting to, to solve. Yeah. But this, this is really beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I'm actually really inspired by Janine. So I'm going to now work on that problem that was mentioned by, I believe, Luis uh, on um, the Gmail and all your previous attachments and just having more organization over things that were sent to you and things that you sent to other people as well. All right. So let's take five minutes and 10 seconds again. And let's go click start and go for it. All right, so how do we organize things? I think, ooh, now maybe that side panel can be our Google Drive and it can show us things. Google Drive. And then maybe there could be another section called categories or tags. So maybe here are some of my Google Drive folders. And same thing with my email tags. And so maybe when I get emails, I can start to tag a few and then they will, it, the algorithm will learn what tag to place for each of them. I'm going to copy Janine's uh, format for tags. Those looked really beautiful. Something like that. Um, but then also the Google Drive I, I, items. So how if we're at three minutes and 44 seconds, if I get an attachment, can I send it to a specific uh, drive folder like this one so could it be maybe here's another kind of tag where i now know what folder that attachment went into so maybe i have an attachment icon and i know that this pdf went into that folder And I can start to do tag systems like that. We're at three minutes. So let's move on from our ideas. Hmm, how about if we had a different kind of layout? So I think we're just really used to this list item, you know, way of thinking, because that's how we've thought about things all, all the time with Gmail. So maybe what if the first half of the screen was the list items and you could scroll and then the other half of the screen was like a the Kanban board or the task board or the Google Drive or like my doing place um, where I'm working. Like I could pull up a calendar, I could do, do different things. So maybe here I pull up Google Drive. And this could be a way to organize. So now I'm kind of working and doing at the same time, because I think as all of us, we switch between tasks a lot. And I think that was a problem that we didn't articulate before, but now as we're designing, we're noticing that that was a problem. So it's interesting how sometimes by sketching things out, we, we noticed more problems. Let's see if I can make this longer, perfect. One minute and 40 seconds, running out of time. So how do I create something where I can pull up whatever I want, whether it's my calendar, whether it's my navig, you know, Google Drive, maybe there could be a, 
navigation at the bottom, kind of like an Apple computer navigation. And then you can just pull up any two apps that you would like to create um, your workspace. So we don't wanna be too prescriptive. I think the problem with Gmail is that it's a little too rigid, but let's say you have you know, Google Drive, here's the calendar, here's the Gmail, here's Hangouts. What are some other ones? I, I know Gmail has a whole bunch of different tools, um, but let's say these are the top tools. I don't care, I'm not gonna make that pretty. And then I can multi-select at least two items and they open it up for me on the main screen. So maybe this first half would be one thing, broad brushstrokes, <laughs> and the other half would be this other thing, oops, other application. And now we can start to play around with different formats. We're at 20 seconds. Oops, I am really slow today. Okay. So maybe it doesn't need to be horizontal, horizontal. Maybe it could be vertical, vertical. Um, this looks really ugly, but something like this. So app number one and app number two. Oh, out of time. Or maybe we should be able to multi-select three apps. I don't know, would that be too much? Would that be a bad idea? All right. Wow, I see a lot of really cool ideas. Uh, Shweta, would you like to talk about some of your ideas? Hello. Yes. Yeah, so my idea basically is for labels and folders. So that is what I liked. I mean, that is the main idea that I was focusing on. Uh, because I find it very hard to, you know, search. Like, we get a lot of emails from Twitter and things like that, which we really don't need it regularly. So if, we ha if I have to select them and delete it, or if I have to select them and make it into a different folder or labels it's really hard for me so yeah my ideas were all floating towards that yeah that is what i mean it's hard to uh, design it within five minutes so i've tried my level best oh yeah no worries uh, this is great it's a great start and it's a great visualization so thank you so much and thank you okay. uh, uh, Sumeya, do you want to share some of your ideas? We have a very similar name. Yes, can you hear me? <laughs> yes, yes I can. Yeah, um, mine is really similar to Shweta's as well, where it's also kind of from Hotmail because they already have that sort feature and I love using that and I have that for my personal. And you know, they let you select uh, emails that you wanna sort, and then you can also move incoming emails. And I love that, and I wish Gmail had that. So I think something as simple as just like a sort button on top uh, would, be, would be helpful. <laughs> yeah, no, this is great. This is a great start. So thanks for sharing. Mm -hmm. All right, so we are at 10 more minutes. So we have five more minutes to design and then five more minutes to talk about our ideas. Um, for the last uh, piece, I'm going to solve that problem about deleting unnecessary items or in your inbox or managing the volume of items in your inbox. But I'm also going to pull in some other problems we've been working on that we're seeing. So I think that problem of like space management and being able to multitask and do different things has become a big problem. And I think um, thinking in that like format where you can multi-select multiple Gmail or Google uh, applications and have your top two be open, I think that's a really interesting idea to play with uh, and maybe um, work on a little bit more. But with that, 
I'm going to click into five minutes and 10 seconds, click start, and let's go for that last problem statement. All right. So hmm, how do you delete thousands of emails? Because I have this problem too. Hmm. So here's that top panel. Here are all these hundreds and thousands of emails. I need a really quick way to, to really delete a whole bunch of emails. And I think this is actually dependent on the tagging system. If we had a really robust tagging system, then I could just delete all within that tag, right? Um, so let's say I, I had a promote promotions, you know, folder or tag. I could just delete everything that had that tag because I know I don't want it. Or I might have saved some of those promotions because I really wanted to use those prom promos. And so everything in my saved folder or tag um, gets saved. So maybe I could do like a delete all option. And so for specific categories, you could just delete all or you can delete um, before a certain time period. So only keep the last month's emails, delete everything else. Uh, so I think it's really up to defining the right uh, categories of del deletion. We're at three minutes and 40 seconds. So if you clicked on that like little panel, you can, you know, just similar to that pop up, you'll see a all your options of deleting. Oops. I'll make that white so you can see it. Right. So I think that's actually the most creative I can be with deleting. It's really the tags. Um, we're at three minutes. So let's see if we can solve some of these other problems as well. The personalization, the space management, everything like that. I'm just going to go. I'm and and not think too hard and just start creating something so we played around with the bottom navigation panel i wonder if we could play around with a top navigation panel and would that help our case so sometimes zoom does it this way i was kind of thinking of zoom when i when i was thinking of these navigation panels and this might be a really out there idea, but I think it's nice how by the time we got to the third layer or level, we're now trying to think a bit more outside the box. And that's the whole point of ideation sessions is not to stick to the uh, less risky ideas, but to put ourselves out there and think of those really bold ideas that might even be too crazy or really just bad ideas. But by coming up with a bad idea, it could lead to something good. So here's that multi-select. Maybe let me play around with three items to multi-select. Something like that. And now I have my three different apps open. Can I create my own workspace size? So if I want my email to be this length, I can do that. If I want this calendar view to be a certain length or space amount, I can do that. And then here's my Google Drive. Should I be allowed this level of customization as, as the user? I don't know. We're at one minute and 21 seconds. Hmm. Can I bring in the tagging system into it in some way? What would that look like if I combine some of these ideas? I think actually three applications open at once is a little too much, but I think I'm okay with two applications open. I feel like you just start to um, lose focus if you have more too many things open. And maybe one could be the more dominant application. Oops. And then can I bring the tagging system into it? I wonder if I could make it more like a playlist. So can emails be like playlists? They're already list items. 
can I have two playlists open at the same time or four that are under different tags? So here's playlist number one, if we think of it from a Spotify perspective. Ah, it's not copying. But I was basically going to have um, four different playlists within this section. All right. Wow, Caitlin, you have a lot of really amazing ideas. I, I'd love to hear uh, some of your ideas. Um, yeah, do you want me to just go through all of them or anything specific? Yeah, all of them are good. Uh, whatever you think are the, the ideas you're most excited about. Um, well, I really liked the my idea, I guess, for personalized organization. Um, I think it was kind of similar to your idea where like um, you could like tag or like uh, filter certain subjects and then it would be kind of like an AI kind of learning thing where in the future it would then move those um, tagged items or from certain centers to different um, tabs that you made. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh yeah, go for it, go for it. And then, yeah, the Google Drive was, I think, pretty straightforward. It was just like, oh, just, you know, you'd have like an option to sync your Gmail. Um, and then there was, you could have like an option to uh, choose kind of which things you wanted to kind of sync over depending so you didn't have to send everything. Um, yeah, and then for searching for attachments in Gmail, um, I had a thing kind of like the search thing in like um, Finder for Mac where like you'd have a thing like the type of document or name or date or sender. Um, so you, it would help you filter if you knew any of those things. Um, and then also my other screen was just, it was kind of similar to um, the Gmail inbox, the only really big difference is, you know, you could differentiate between documents and messages and there'd be a thing so you could see the image of your attachment to give you a better idea of like what it actually was just um, besides just seeing the name of it. Nice, I really like this one. This is a really great one. Just making Gmail more visual would be nice because right now it's just so much text and it's blocks of text. Um, so anywhere where we can make it more visual, uh, I love that. But thank you so much for sharing, really appreciate it. Uh, let's see if anyone else would like to share. Um, all right, I think Janine, I'm gonna ask you again because I just, I love your ideas. They're all really, really amazing. <laughs> all right, well, uh, I'll, yeah, uh, going back to the one that uh, I did a while ago regarding uh, the media, um, like taking like a Trello uh, idea and maybe uh, thinking that we can view uh, the media per category. So like for work, I can just click uh, like view media and it will uh, like slide into the left all the like all the files or attachments um, under the work category. And mm -hmm. from there I can like sort, maybe I can just find like all the PDF or image or I could just maybe search um, a specific file under that category that, that that would be helpful, I think, as well. Wow, I love this. This is really beautiful. And yeah, for, for deleting, uh, maybe just uh, an easier way to like bug delete it by like sender or date range or other like, um, yeah, like other things. Um, I think it's hard right now to like delete um, it that way through Gmail when you like search it because it uh, it kind of mixes up with other like uh, emails. So I think being uh, more specific as to I just want to delete uh, all emails from the sender and all that. So yeah, and maybe sort it as well, filter it by categories. That would be good too. I like this visual for deleting. It's very satisfying to seeing that you're about to delete 1,200 emails. I think. There's a little of uh, like a beauty to that, <laughs> that I like. Uh, thank you so much. These are all really beautiful. So I'm, I'm really excited to see, see you turn this into maybe a, a portfolio piece because these ideas are really cool. Um, so kudos on that. Thank you. Right. So with that, we're actually exactly at 5.30. So I'm going to stop sharing. And uh, thank you everyone for joining us. Um, 
really appreciate it. And hopefully you can use some of these ideas for your portfolio as you're going through the job search, or even if you're just getting into UX, uh, I hope you check out ID8 Labs and uh, join our Slack community and additional learning resources. So uh, best of luck to everyone in your UX journey. And thank you so much for coming. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Scott. And thank you, Suzanne. Oh, that was another timer. Thank you so much.